Hi, my name is Joel Schneider, and I would like to talk to you today about Lagrange multipliers and how they apply to microeconomics. I've been interested in microeconomics this semester, and it's really cool to see how the material you're learning in multivariable calculus really applies to a lot of different scenarios. So this is one really good example. So oftentimes in economics, economists are interested in talking about how businesses operate under different constraints of the market. For example, something we call as input choice. Given how expensive different inputs like machinery or labor can be, and how the firm requires these inputs to produce things, how much of each input should a firm buy to minimize their costs. So an example could be a car factory and they're wanting to buy machines and pay for laborers, or maybe a chocolate factory and they want to buy uh, cocoa beans and cream. What combination of these is best so that they can minimize their expenses? To simplify the calculations here in this problem, we're only going to look at two different inputs. All of the things we use here can really be generalized to include many more. Since the firm is trying to minimize their costs, we should probably find out how much money the firm is going to be spending if it's going to buy a certain combination of inputs. We can find the total cost function, C. The money they spend on the first input will be x1 times w1, and if we add that to the amount of money they spend on the second input, x2 times w2, we get our overall cost function, C. When we look at problems here with firms and input choice, something that's really important to describing the problem is a production function. A production function um, is of the form y of x1 and x2, where x1 and x2 are the quantities of each of the two inputs that a firm buys. This function, given two amounts of inputs, tells us how much the firm will be able to produce with these inputs. Given that a firm wants to reach a desired production of Q, the firm wants to minimize costs when they buy inputs. So we want to minimize C subject to the constraint that our production function, y of x1, x2, equals Q. Given that our inputs are both positive and that our production function is differentiable, we can find this optimal input choice. To help in this calculation, we define a number, the marginal rate of technical substitution, or MRTS for short, to be the absolute value of the partial derivative of y with respect to x1 divided by the partial derivative of y with respect to x2. This value represents the number of units of input x2 that we need to buy in order to replace one lost unit of x1 and be able to produce the same amount. When we graph the production function equals q with x2 on the vertical axis and x1 on the horizontal axis, the MRTS represents the absolute value of the slope of the tangent line. We want to minimize our cost function subject to the constraint of our production function. This sounds like a Lagrange multipliers problem, so we can apply the method of Lagrange multipliers to get the gradient of c equals lambda times the gradient of y. We can evaluate the gradient of c pretty straightforwardly to get w1, w2 as our vector. We're trying to solve this problem for a generic production function y, so all we can say about the gradient of y is that it's the partial derivative with respect to x1 and the partial derivative with respect to x2. Now we have an equation relating two vectors, so we can split it into two equations by setting their components equal to each other. We get w1 equals lambda times the partial derivative of y with respect to x1, and w2 equals lambda times the partial derivative of y with respect to x2. Both of these equations have lambda in it, and we don't really know what lambda is, and we don't really want to find it either. So we can solve both of these equations for lambda and set them equal to each other, thereby eliminating lambda as a variable. We then rearrange and get the expression w1 over w2 equals the partial derivative of y with respect to x1 over the partial derivative of y with respect to x2. This is equal to the MRTS. So we get the equation w1 over w2 equals the MRTS. Let's take this relationship and apply it to another problem. Let's say we go back to the example we used earlier about a car factory wanting to buy machinery and labor. We usually refer to the amount of machinery that a firm buys as capital, and we use a capital K 
to refer to the amount of capital that a firm buys. We also refer to the amount of labor that a firm buys with a capital L. Let's say that you own a car factory and your production function is KL squared. This is a form of a pretty stereotypical production function and we call them Cobb-Douglas functions. Let's say that the rental price of capital R is 1 and that the wage of labor, W, is 3. What's the optimal combination of inputs if you want to produce Q cars? Using the MRTS relationship that we developed before, we can calculate the MRTS. The partial derivative of Y with respect to K is L squared, and the partial derivative with respect to L is 2KL. Dividing these, we get that the MRTS is L over 2K. If we set this equal to the price ratio R over W, which is one-third, we get that L over 2K equals one-third. Rearranging, we get that L equals 2K over 3. If we go back to our production function, Q equals KL squared, we can plug in the value we got for L to get K times the quantity 2K over 3 squared. Multiplying this out, we get that Q equals 4K cubed over 9. Solving for k, we get that k equals the cube root of 9q over 4. We found earlier that l equals 2k over 3, so we can substitute this value of k we just found to find that l equals the cube root of 2q over 3. We can substitute these values for k and l into our cost function, c equals rk plus wl. Doing so, we get the cube root of 9q over 4 plus 3 times the cube root of 2q over 3. We can simplify this to the cube root of 9q over 4 plus the cube root of 18q. Adding these together, we get that our overall cost is 3 halves times the cube root of 18q. To summarize, first we examined the firm and figured out what its cost function was given a set of inputs. Second, we wanted to optimize this cost function by minimizing it, given the constraint of the production function. Third, we used Lagrange multipliers to show that the MRTS equals the price ratio. Finally, we used this to find the optimal inputs and the total cost as a function of Q.